there is a, I mean, there's always been whitewashing, but like it's yes, at the level. It's you know, it's like right now. I I, I even seen them make a. I don't know if that was you that uh that was saying that in the video. That was uh making Massa Musa white. In, yes. In the, yes. Yes. So talk talk a little bit about uh, uh about that in in the school system in in, in these textbooks uh, textbooks and what they got going on, man. Let, let them know what's you know. Well, when you look at the educational system, we need to be clear that the system is designed to produce robots and servants. So we need to be very clear on that. I don't care what type of school the child goes to, public, private, parochial, independent, charter, the system is designed to produce robots and servants. And so when you pay for your child to go to a private school, you're uh, basically paying for them to be taught how to be a servant. And when you look at the miseducation machine, and you dark just for one second, my brother, just for one second. But um, when you look at the miseducation machine, as it relates to black children, the goal of public education as it relates to black children is to prepare our boys for prison and our daughters for poverty. That's the purpose. And that's what you talk about in the book, right? Yes, sir. That's what I talk about in the book. And it's important for your listeners to know that because our parents keep on looking for something from the school system that the school system was never designed to provide. They're always looking for this elite learner, this deep thinker, this business owner, this doctor, this lawyer. Public school wasn't designed for that, not even for white children. The purpose of public school originally, the original intent of public school was to prepare children so that they could engage in basic reading, writing, and math exercises so they could go and work for the factories, the corporations, education was intended to serve capitalism. Education was intended to serve capitalism. So here's the question. If education was intended to serve capitalism and there's no more jobs under capitalism, yeah. what is the new purpose of education? And for black children, again, it's to prepare the boys for prison and the girls for poverty. Wow, wow. And you... We see that. That's, that's see that. so that that's real thick. You, as a matter of fact, when you when you're speaking on that, I wanna I wanna kind of I, I wanna touch on this. I wanna shift gears a little bit. We're, we're talking about children and caring about our own children. This immigration debacle, man, it's a distraction. I and mean, a black maybe. black people because we love everybody but ourselves. Exactly. We love everybody but ourselves. No matter what issue comes up, if it's not, if it doesn't concern black people, we are all for it. We are all for it. If it concerns black folks, we don't want nothing to do with it. Nothing. But if it, if it concerns white kids or Arabs, the East Indians, Anglo Saxons, Latinos, Chinese, we are all for it. Here's my question to black folks who are caught up in the immigration distraction. First of all, first of all, when did America bring its largest number of immigrants to this country? In the years immediately following the 13th Amendment, the emancipation, the end of the Civil War. And do you know why America brought two to four million immigrants into the country? When you had two to four million blacks, newly free, needing work, need jobs, need employment, can't find none. Why would America bring two to four million immigrants after slavery where you had two to four million slaves who could have took care of those jobs because america after slavery ended agreed that it would economically suffocate the black man economic suffocation so whenever there is a new market for new jobs it is it is already understood we don't give jobs to black people not in mass, not systematically. We will never systematically employ black folks. The only systematic employment we had was slavery. That's it. And that was unpaid. Okay. So they brought in Chinese, they brought in Mexican, they brought in Irish to work jobs because they didn't want to give black people any paychecks. And instead, they would send you to jail. Yes. Why do we have a Mexican influx in America now? 
The Mexican influx is to make sure black people don't get control of any economic sector in this country. Mexicans are in America to replace black people. Let me say that one more time. Mexicans are in America to replace black folks. That's nothing against the Mexicans. Guess what? They're looking out for themselves. They yes, support. they are. Yes, they are. And, well, and that's the thing, man. Like, you know, we got this thing where we, I mean, it, it, like, like you said, you, you know, we're not, we don't, when it comes to us, man, it's like we, we buck, we, we got to buck against it, man. And I, I, you know, Here's the thing. You got black folks out here fighting for the immigrants. Now, don't get me wrong. Separate with children from their parents. We don't agree yeah. with that. It's wrong. Yeah, it is. And spirit, we can support that. Because as African people, we're going to look out for the best interests of everybody. That's who we are. However, the political time right now dictates that all of our energy, 100% of it, must be directed at ourselves. Exactly. We don't have any time to be fighting anybody else's battle. And the irony is that we love fighting other people's battles, although they have never fought ours. Never, ever, ever. Right. Arabs have never fought for blacks. Latinos have never fought for blacks. Italians, European Jews, Arabs, East Indians, they have never fought for blacks. So here's the question for black folks fighting for immigrants. Once they get accepted into America, what are they going to do for you? Mm. Nothing. They are coming to replace you. They are not coming to fight with you. Listen, everybody in America who's not white, Everybody in America who's not white knows that if you want to make it in America, you do not align yourself politically, socially, religiously, economically with black folks. That is the rule. Mm -hmm. So we're fighting for people. If you're fighting for immigration rights, you're literally fighting for people to come here, take your job, take your home, take your child's scholarship. And guess what? Push you further down the economic ladder. Push you further right. down. The social structure puts you further behind in the political food chain of the United States. Now, if Africans were fighting for African immigration, I would support that. But guess what? This immigration talk, this ain't about Africans. Africans have always had trouble getting into America. Africans from the Caribbean have always had trouble getting into America. This ain't about them. Now, if this issue was about African immigration, I would support it. Because Africans are always discriminated against by the United States Customs and Border Patrol. Always. But this ain't about Africans. This is about Arabs who don't like you. Mexicans who don't like you. Asians who don't like you. Mm -hmm. So you're literally fighting for people to come here and help the white man oppress you. I do not support immigration reform. I am not involved in it at all because nobody likes black folks. So why am I going to help people come here? Exactly. Come here and participate in my demise. No, thank you. And the, and the thing is, you you, you notice that uh, every there we we ain't even at the table. We no. ain't even at the table. And we don't mind being at the table. We don't mind. Remember, black people don't want power. What separates us from all other people in the United States? The one thing that separates blacks, American Africans, from everybody else in America. Everybody else. Everyone else wants cultural power bases. The Chinese are building a cultural power base. Arabs, cultural power base. European Jews, cultural power base. Mexicans, cultural power. People use culture to galvanize political and economic power. Everybody except us. Black people don't want power. Guess what we want? You there? Which is our psychological weaknesses, mm. our psychological homelessness, our low racial self-esteem is what's keeping us distracted from what we should be doing. Everyone else wants power. We just want participation. Yeah, exactly. We wanna we wanna and we wanna feel validated. We need we need them to validate us and make us feel we wanted. We want a rainbow coalition. We want a rainbow coalition. Yeah, exactly. Coalition that we're never gonna have because there's no black in the rainbow. There's no black in the rainbow. Uh, so, uh, you know, man, I, I'm really loving. I'm really loving the game, man, because we really, we really need to have these talks. We really need to have these talks, and we really, you know, it's we gotta, we gotta spread this stuff, man. Uh, it, you know, we just, we're so big 
on rejecting this stuff. So even with the talk about that, I want I want to talk about this, right? And it's something that I, I believe in. Like if it's extreme coming from the white folk, man, I believe it. I I'm, I'm I don't doubt none of this shit. But a lot of this going on with these girls coming up missing, like a lot of them black girls coming up missing in Chicago. Um, I wanted that's, to talk. That's sex trafficking. Yeah, yeah. But this is what this is something I wanted to touch on. What do you, how do you what do you think about this organ harvesting deal, man? You know, oh, not all of my organs. Oldest, that's one of the oldest underground markets in world history. Organ trafficking. Uh, see, here's the thing. Chicago. You look at Chicago or any city with, with black on black crime, which is basically everywhere because we hate ourselves everywhere. But you can't tell me that you have hundreds of young, healthy black men and women. Hundreds of young, healthy black men and women. Healthy being murdered. And you're going to put them in the ground with all their organs. Mm. When you have people around the world who need a kidney, he didn't get shot in the kidney. He didn't get shot in the lung. He didn't get shot in the spleen. You understand? All these different parts of the body, that pancreas, he didn't get shot in the pancreas. Mm. All these organs that can be transplanted, they're not going to tell me that they're not stealing them and selling them because you got to keep in mind, the only thing that you need to live that you cannot buy in a store is an organ. The only thing you need to live that you cannot buy you can buy everything else you need to live. Food, clothes, you cannot buy an organ. So if somebody needs an organ, you got to get one from someone who got one. Who got one, yeah. With all these health, and you got to keep in mind, we're the original people of the planet. We're the original man and woman. So our organs... ...body because... Now, of course, you still got to have the right matches, but in terms of a positive uh, 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 acculturation of that organ post-transplant, you want it black. And everybody knows this. I've even read articles where they said the black heart is the preferred heart. The black kidney is a preferred kidney because we're the original man and woman. So we have certain DNA, certain energy in our organs nobody else has. Exactly, exactly. So, so and, and that's what I'm... Go, go ahead. But I was going to say, with that being said, I believe... I believe, and I ain't been wrong about a prediction yet. I don't think I'll be wrong about this one, although we will have to wait a while to find out whether or not it's true, because I don't think the truth about this is coming out anytime soon. And that is to say this. I believe absolutely, positively, and unequivocally that the black-on-black -black homicide rates in America's leading cities, of which Chicago is number one, I believe we're going to find out that these are orchestrated mm. assassinations carried out by hired private militia companies mm. on behalf of the states, the cities, and the government itself to repopulate cities where black people are not wanted and to also find markets for organs that can be sold on the international underground. I absolutely believe that. The yeah. Purge, the Purge, the Purge movie. Yeah. Is, and that's exactly what they're doing to black America. And the Purge 3 movie that comes out next month mm. is supposed to have a mostly black cast. I want to see this third one because I'm hearing that this third Purge, Purge 3 or 4, whatever it is, it's supposed to talk about that. It's supposed to deal with the fact that these black on black killings are really government assassinations being carried out by private militias. So I'm looking forward to that movie. But whether the movie has that or not, I want your audience to know that I absolutely believe that this is a purging going on and it's being orchestrated by the government, not black folks. I, I you know what? I, I totally agree. I'm I'm glad that you broke it down like that because I it, when I speak on that man, people look at me crazy, and I'm like, listen. I, I I see what these folks is doing. I, I already know what it is. So I I want to I want to switch gears a little bit. And this this is something I want to touch on, man, for people to to understand the nature of this crackle. I'm gonna call him what the fuck he is. The nature of this crackle. We we're protesting. 
we begging these folks to do this or to be humane. They listen, they're not gonna change. This is who they are. This is who they are. How do we get us to understand this? Because the reason we have trouble understanding this, and let's keep in mind, we'll be celebrating 400 years, excuse me, not celebrating. We'll be memorializing 400 years of the black experience in America as oppressed people. Mm. 1619 is when they first brought us as enslaved Africans. Well, guess what? Next summer is 2019. So we are at 400 years. And black folks are still looking for white folks to change. It's no different than a woman dating a man or a brother dating a sister who clearly don't give a damn about them, but they're so in love with love yeah. that you can't see that the person you with is not in your best interest. Black people suffer from battered spouse syndrome. America has beat us down so bad that we now think we need white folks in order to survive as black folks. And I'm telling you this, one of our worst psychological illnesses, like there's nothing white people can do to us. Believe you me, there is nothing white people can do to us that would make us say, I am tired of this and I'm leaving. Man, yeah. listen, <laughs> that, that is so Nothing. True. They can't kill enough. They can't create enough diseases. The police can't kill enough. They can't mass incarcerate enough. They can't exterminate enough. They can't organ traffic enough. They can't miseducate enough. Listen to me. Black folks have an eternal love for white folks. I don't care what you do. We will never get to a point where we are fed up with the racism. We will never get to that point. That is how psychologically devastated we are. Yes, we are. Because we're, like uh, uh, like I was just speaking about the uh, Antoine Rose situation in Pittsburgh. And uh, police officer in this situation had just got sworn in 90 minutes earlier. So he 90 minutes ago just got sworn in got out there in, in Pittsburgh, shoot a black kid in the back three times. And the first thing we do is jump up and start protesting and, you know, we, we, we hitting the streets. And the thing is, I understand the outrage, but my thing is, who the hell are you talking to? You see what I'm saying? Like, what you what you think? They showing you. that That's, that's the problem I have and, and why I brought up the issue with us not getting it. It's like, they showing you. You can't see this shit? It's right in front of your face. They doing it every day. And 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 another thing is, you know, I, I hear brothers talking about it all the time, man, you know, because I studied a lot of stuff. And to me, you know, we ain't got no rights. It's like, yo, I got rights, man. They can't violate my rights. They're doing it every day. You know why they're doing it? Because you ain't got none. To me, they, they, First, white folks don't control black people with paper law. Let, let's just be very clear. Oh, man, good. Our good. problem is that not paper crazy. law. Our problem is not paper law. Mm. It, it is not the laws that determine how black, how, how white people treat black folks. So this ain't got nothing to do with no paper law. Mm. It's about psychological power. That's all this is. This is about psychological power. They have the power and they're using it. And you're dealing with the people whose whole aim for the past 500 years on the planet has been to take as much as they can from other people. You understand? They have no limits to how they mistreat others. They have no limits. They have no compassion. That's who you are dealing with. And black people don't want to admit it because if you admit that, the next question becomes, what are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about it? See, if you admit you know, you now have the responsibility to do something about it. So black people like to live in denial because as long as you live in denial, guess what? You don't have to be responsible. I give you a miseducation analogy. Let's take black parents. For a black parent to admit that your child really doesn't have a reading disability. He's just a lazy ass little Negro. That's all. He ain't got no reading problem. He's just a lazy, yeah. sloppy, spoiled ass little boy because that's how you raise him. Yeah. He ain't got no problem. 
But for a mother to a father to admit that, that Dr. Umar says my son will have a learning disability. He's just a sloppy, lazy, spoiled ass little brat who don't want to apply himself in the class. That means I now have to take the responsibility yes. for helping him change his attitude. I don't want to do that. That's going to be hard work to change my son after I didn't spoiled him rotten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to act like Dr. Umar don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. And I'm going to live in denial. I'm going to live in denial about him saying my son will have a learning disability. Because living in denial, I don't have to do no work. I don't have to take any responsibility. See, that's black people. We live in denial about yeah. the permanency of racism. Because if you admit that racism is permanent, you got to do something about it. You got to do something about it, man. And 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 you, you man, you hit it spot on, man. Um, responsibility, you know, responsibility is something that uh, being responsible, holding ourselves accountable, and and checking and change, like a change is, man. It's like we're so afraid of that. We're so afraid to get out of our comfort zone that it's 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 just really ridiculous, man. Like I don't I don't know I don't. It's, a lot of times, man, I get. To the point where I'm like, I don't see, I don't see how we gonna, how we gonna do this, how we gonna get our way. You're not gonna do it with the current mindset you got. Mm -hmm. The issue isn't whether we can solve this. We can solve this in one day, bro. Mm -hmm. Solve this in one day. The problem is that the consciousness that you have of black folks, the collective consciousness and the individual consciousness is not sufficient to achieve the desired end, which is liberation. In other words, you're going to have to create a new collective consciousness, which can only happen without children. Because I'm going to be honest with you, anybody that's 40 years old and up, if they ain't ready, they ain't going to never be ready. Yeah, so yeah exactly. My focus is on those who are under the age of yeah. 25. The problem with those who are under the age of 25 the propaganda campaign against them is so strong that they are almost useless to the struggle already. They're already destroyed, many of them. They caught up in home. You froze up. I, I, you froze up. Homosexuality, they call yes. it acceptanization and liberation. So our young people have damn near been destroyed before they even had a chance to learn about who they are. So Man. we are in trouble. And it all starts with what? Education. Education. As long as we put our kids in their schools, as long as most black kids are taught by white teachers, you never fix this. You will never fix this. And then guess what a good black parent does? A good black parent will take a black child being taught by white teachers, and they will pay out of pocket they will pay out of pocket for the black child to go to better white teachers. <laughs> they sure will, man.